Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Woodpecker's Deep Dive. My name's Jeff Ferris, welcome to my shop. Today, we're gonna take a closer look at Woodpecker's Exact Width Dado Jig, and how you can use that to cut perfect fitting dados for any size material. All right, let's get started. What we're gonna to do today is take a look at some of the common questions that we get on social media and on our customer service line about the Exact Width Dado Jig and the solutions or answers to those questions. Uh, let's start with taking a look at how the jig works. Uh, this is a jig that uses a template guide bushing. The bit is inside that bushing and the outside of the template is gonna ride on our jig while the cutter makes the cut. Now in any template guide bushing situation, one of the very critical things is that the bushing is centered on the bit, okay? And it's very critical with the exact width dado jig that you get that as close to perfectly centered as possible. So there's lots of different methods to do that. What I have for my router is a centering cone. So that's gonna go into the collet and then we're gonna lift the base of the router up uh, until it hits that cone and that'll push it into the center. But I need to lock it into the collet first. Okay, so now my centering cone is in the collet, so that's what we wanna center to. I'm gonna do that by unlocking the base so that it moves and we'll bring that up and it will push the template holder into the exact center just to make sure that it is perfectly centered. We'll bounce it a couple of times and make sure that it locates just where we want it. And then I'll tighten the screws down. Anytime you're using a guide bushing, you're gonna be better off if you have it perfectly centered. Now, I'm gonna take the centering cone out and put the router bit in. Another thing you want to pay attention to anytime you're using a template guide bushing is how far down uh, your router bit is going to go. Uh, it's pretty easy to run the collet of your router into the template guide bushing. And that uh, is a, a scary situation, something you want to avoid. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find the limit of travel. I don't want it to go any farther than that. So there is my zero point. I want to make sure that we aren't ever going any deeper than that. All right, we've got our router set up. Now let's go over to the Exact Width Dado Jig and see how to get it ready to go. Now, a lot of you are probably familiar with the concept of the track saw. There's a strip on the edge of this and when you first set this up, the first thing that you do is take your saw, put it on the track, and cut that edge so that it perfectly matches your guide rail to your saw. But we're gonna do the same thing with the exact width dado jig. These little white strips on the inside here attach to the back, and we are gonna cut these before we do anything else with the jig we're gonna cut these so that they match our guide bushing and our router bit. Now, if you'll notice on this one, this corner is bolted down. So that's the side that is always our constant. This end is gonna be square. This end is adjustable for the length of your board. And then we're going to take this side and set that to the width of our stock. But this side, the one without the label, is the one that's always the constant fixed side. So I'm gonna bring that just to any given point and we're gonna put a clamp on that. Now we're relatively straight. So we've got everything else to where it will adjust. Lock this side down. Now the jig comes with this little spacer. We've installed our guide bushing down here at the fixed end, we're gonna put our guide bushing inside. And down at the other end, we're gonna put our spacer in. Now we're gonna bring that down. We don't wanna squeeze tight. We just wanna bring it in contact on the spacer and in contact on the guide bushing and then clamp everything up. Now I'm gonna test my setup just by 
taking the router and sliding it along the track to make sure that it slides freely but doesn't have any movement inside my two guides. And that feels just right. Now before we take our trimming cut, we're going to get rid of our extra spacer. Then we'll start the router, plunge into our guide strips, and cut them from end to end. Now my edge guides are perfectly dialed in to my router bit and guide bush in combination. Now the beauty of the exact width dado jig is, it doesn't matter what your thickness is of your material, we're always going to cut the dado to match. Don't have to measure a thing. We're going to do it by using the material as its own guide. And I'm going to show you four different thicknesses here with the same router bit and guide bush in combination. Uh, this is 12 millimeter plywood. This is 18 millimeter plywood. This is some stock that I think is somewhere around seven eighths, not exactly sure. And this is not quite one inch, it's 24 millimeter plywood with a 16th of an inch of laminate on both sides of it. So I don't know what that comes out to. The exact measurement doesn't matter. We're gonna make them fit. So in almost any layout that we're doing with sheet goods where we're gonna cut a dado, we're gonna have a starting point, And that's where we wanna begin is by getting the jig out of the way for a second. And we want to lay down a line here on our stock that's gonna represent one side. And just for argument's sake, let's call that five and a quarter for this one. So I'm gonna scribe a line, almost the full length of the piece, right at five and a quarter inches. Now we're gonna take the fixed side of the dado jig and I'm going to line up that fixed edge with my pencil line. When we get it dialed in, we're going to clamp it up. Now we're going to take the material that we want to fit, we're going to drop it inside that white edge guide and bring the other one up to it. Now there's a tendency for people to want to really try and squeeze that together. And we hear about that quite a bit, my dados are too tight. That's because you're getting a little carried away with the pressure that you put on this outer bar. You want to just bring it into contact and lock it. Now when we made our trimming cut, cutting our edge guides, we had no movement side to side this way. But now that side to side movement is what's actually going to determine the width of our dado. We're going to make one cut against this edge and a second cut against this edge. And the combined should be exactly the thickness of our material. That one's a perfect fit. Let's move on to the next one. Another perfect fit. Now we'll set up for our milled sassafras.
Ooh, John. <laughs> I didn't know you were shooting. Oh, that is a nice fit. Now our laminated Baltic birch. So the first one, I needed to pinch just a little bit tighter. But after I got figured out how much pressure to put on it, we got a perfect fit on all of these. Hey folks, thanks so much for watching today. If you enjoyed the show, be sure and hit the subscription button and the notification bell. That way you'll know about every one of our great videos right when they come out. And give us a thumbs up, we appreciate it. Thanks again so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Deep Dive.